So we launched it in 1961 at Geneva. And uh, one car went over there for uh, to go on the stand, on the show stand. And uh, then we had two other cars, because we hadn't got many E-types about. I'd only got a, a, a couple of test cars. We had the fixed head, which was uh, uh, double HP 600. Then we had the open one, which was 77RW. That was the open. So we had fixed head and the open. That was all we'd got. And I was still using them as test cars. So the one that went to Geneva, that went on show. Bob Berry, who was the uh, publicity man for Jaguar, he took over 9600 HP purely to demonstrate uh, to the pr prospective buyers. Now, he'd got there on the weekend, Saturday, and they got it all ready for Sunday. Now, what they had at Geneva or for the motor show, I don't know where they still do it, but you went along the lakeside of Geneva and farther down there, about two miles down, there was this little hill climb section and they were using it for demonstrations. So there was Ferrari, Mercedes, all cars that were on show had got demonstration cars there. So Bob Berry starts demonstrating <clears throat> on, uh, on Monday morning. And of course the queue at, at the show who wanted to run up the hill, up this test hill, in the E-type was fantastic. So by the end, towards the end of the day, Betty was worn out. And I, 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 he told me after he got in touch with uh, Lyons and, and Haynes and that, said, look, I can't keep this up all week. I'm worn out. We've only got the one car. So it was suggested, all right, uh, Dewis has got the other car, the open car. We'll get him to bring it over and he can demonstrate that with you. That'll keep the crowd down a bit. So it's all I got was uh, Tuesday morning. No, sorry, late Monday afternoon. I'm on the test track at Minor, doing some brake tests on 77RW. And uh, Dolby, the track manager, he comes out in his Land Rover, stops me. He said, Norman, you've got to get back to the uh, factory fairly quickly. I said... Oh, he said, no, he said, they've told me to fetch you off, send you back. So I get back to Jaguar. There's Bill Haynes and uh, Bob Knight and quite a few of them standing around. Oh, got in the shop, I spread him out of the shop. Oh, you're back. These guys started uh, opening the bunny. I said, what's going on? He said, Norman, uh, you've got to get this car over to Geneva. So I said, oh, OK. Now, this is sort of three o'clock in it, Monday afternoon. So uh, I said, but it's got all the instruments in, all my gauges for the brake test. Oh, no, these guys, are, the me mechanics are waiting. They'll whip it all out. We'll give it a quick clean up and all that. So I was assuming I was going to go off the next day, you see, Tuesday. And uh, so I said, well, well, I'll see you guys tomorrow then. I'll let me know what time I'm uh, catching the boat. And he said, uh, where are you going? I said, I'm going home now. I said, there's nothing. Left. No, he said, you've got to go now, today. I said, what? He said, no. He said, here, yeah, here's your ticket. He said, you're on the road, 10 o'clock tonight. I said, What's, what are you doing? I said, oh, I want to go to bed. He said, no, Norman, you can do it. You've got to get this over there for 10 o'clock in the morning, if it's possible. I said, there's no way. No way we'll do it. He said, well, will you try? I said, all right. I said, but it won't work. I said, anyway, I'll go home and get my overnight bag, which I'd always had. He said, that's all done. It's in your office. They'd already been up to uh, <laughs> to see Nan and say he's off for the weekend. She always used to this, pack the bag. So there I am. I hang about. They take all the instruments out, clean the car up and all that. I left, uh, I left the factory at about quarter to eight. I'd got to be on the, down at Dover for 10 o'clock. So I drive, mind you, those days we hadn't got motorways, but there wasn't the traffic like it is today. So I scream off down. And uh, I got into Dover. I thought, well, I'd better get some petrol, fill up. So I'm, when I get the other side, I don't have to stop probably. Fill up, drive into Dover. It's all empty, nobody about. I can see a boat with the lights on and everything. And uh, 
I thought, I wonder if that's the one. And I'm just sort of musing over that. And this guy comes up, a port official, he said, excuse me, sir, can I help you? I said, yeah, he got his torch on. And I, I said, is that uh, the Ostend boat? He said, yeah. I said, I've got to be on it. He said, you're too late. He said, uh, you should have been on it a quarter of an hour ago. I said, well, I said, I don't know. I've got to get on that boat. And his light shone on the car, the green 779W. And he said, what's this? I said, this is the new Jaguar. Just been launched yesterday. At, oh, he said, that's the one I've been on the news about. He said, what is it, 150 mile an hour? I said, yeah. He said, this? I said, oh, yeah. God, he said, this is some car. He said, hang on. So he got on his two-way radio and said, look, you've got to get this guy on. This is the new Jaguar, which, which has been on the television and the news. You want to see it. So they let me on. I got on. And uh, while they were looking at the car, I went and had a coffee and uh, got my head down, had a half hour's sleep, got off at Ostend, and uh, I drove non-stop to Geneva all the way through. And I arrived there at 12 minutes to 10. I'd got to be there for 10. Of course, when I arrive at Geneva, there's all the crowd, the press people there, and Sir William Lyons and all of them there. Uh, Emil Fry, he's the main dealer for Jaguar and that. So I pull up and uh, Lyons just walked across and he looked at his wife and he said, I knew you'd do it, this, and, walked, <laughs> and just walked off. So... <laughs> So Lofty then walks over and said, well done, Norman. He said, we thought you'd do it. I said, yeah. I said, I'm a bit tired. I said, where, where, where am I staying? What hotel? He said, what do you want? I said, I'm good. I said, I'm in the bed for a couple of nights. He said, Norman, you've got to get up now and start demonstrating. Bob Berry's already up there. Get up there now. I said, look. He said, go. He said, you can do it. So what do I do? I have to drive up. I hadn't had to shave, nothing. Drive up to the test, uh, test hill and uh, start demonstrating it. So that was the uh, mad, what they call the mad dash, do his mad, da mad dash to Geneva. I did it in 11 hours. My average speed was 68 mile an hour uh, for the journey. And uh, so we did the demonstrations. And again, uh, I did them on the Tuesday. Wednesday morning we got up there and what I suggested was, instead of us keep going to the salon and picking one person up and driving him all the way down to the test hill, I said, you get a, a saloon car and you can bring four or five people at a time. We will stay per, at the test hill. And you bring the people, and when we finish, take them back and do a shuttle. Quick. Good idea. So that's what we started. That was started on, on the, on the uh, Wednesday morning. Now... About two o'clock, uh, just after lunchtime, I've got this guy in with me. He's a German bloke, wants to demonstrate his service. And what they do, they just, they just bring you up to a start and a guy drops a flag when he knows the hill's clear. And the hill, it goes up quite a climb and you go over the top, there's about a mile and a half fairly flat runway and then you come down the other side back to the start. So I'm sitting there with this... Uh, 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 Demonstrate, I'm demonstrating to this guy and he, uh, some guy walks over and uh, he said, excuse me, Mr. Dewis. I said, yeah. And I could see round his neck some of the string and I thought, hello, on the end of that there's a stopwatch because we always had the old string with us. So I said, yeah, yeah. I said, can I help you? He said, yeah. He said, um, just to let you know, Mr. Dewis, you're the quickest up the hill. <laughs> I said, oh. Oh, I said, I didn't know we'd be in time. He said, not officially, he said, but I'm down here, two or three of us, and, and we're, we're doing a check. He said, you're, you're the quickest. The Mercedes guy hears this, you see. So I go up the hill again, Betty's going up, and we're doing this, and the Mercedes start going quicker, we start going quicker. And uh, the Ferrari boys hear about it. So it becomes, uh, by the sort of three o'clock Wednesday afternoon, it becomes a hill climb speed test. Who can get up the quickest? And uh, some of these poor guys who were getting in the car for demonstration, <laughs> it was a shame because when we came back to the start, they'd got white knuckles. 
the <laughs> toe caps were uh, shoes were turned up where they'd been pressing on the floor. I always remember I brought one. I got back with one guy, and as he got out, he was shaking a bit, and uh, the other guy getting in, he said, "What was it like?" He said, "Don't go, don't go." <laughs> <He> said, <laughs> But anyway, we finished up for the whole week. Um, we finished up for the whole week. We were the quickest uh, for the whole week. And uh, Bob Betty, he, he speeded up as well. So the two Jaguars got exclusive coverage in the press. Uh, the demonstrations are dominated by the uh, new Jaguar E-Type. So that, again, boosted the uh, publicity. And... Uh, so that's always been, everybody says to me now, how about the uh, Geneva run, you know. That's, and, uh, no, it, you're famous it, for that. It's, it's been a famous, uh, yeah.